Okay, so we are starting at the moment, and um, before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. Then we go through the part this particular session that we have on for today. Um, this session will be lasting for an hour, but I'll try to make it a bit shorter for us to be able to close. So, um, first of all, my full name is Joris Dalenton Pashi, and um, I'm the com lead community manager for the African Wikimedia Technical Community at the moment. Um, this session will be focused on how to be able to use uh, Wikimedia Fabricator for um, effective project management. And as with regards to managing um, Wikimedia projects within um, the Wikimedia ecosystem at large. Right, next slides. Next two slides. Okay, so um, when we say, I believe that most of us do have a fair idea of what a pro some uh, what a project management tool is all about, right? If anyone here has a fair idea of what a project management tool is, please do feel free to share your thoughts on what a project management tool is to you. Or if you have any examples, or if you have ever used any project management tool before, you can just let me know the kind of project management tool you've used before. Trello? Notion. Notion. Who else again? Okay. Yeah, so the uh, Wikimedia Fabricator is basically one of the web project, ma project management tools mostly used by uh, most of uh, the uh, Wikimedia technical uh, teams and communities within the movement at Flash. So with this particular um, data and has certain features that can be able to also help us in terms of managing success as well. Then uh, it helps uh, teams and um, uh, user groups or let's say um, communities to be able to also uh, collaborate together to work on specific taxes projects and um, other uh, essential uh, details to us. Aside that, too, it also helps us in terms of uh, for us to be able to also manage uh, most of the code repositories, right? How people can be able to get together to contribute to specific media, uh, uh, which media uh, code repositories at large. Then, um, in order for us to be able to also search for specific code repositories, when we want to improve upon any specific tool or any of the Wikimedia projects, it can be able to also help us to be able to navigate through all of these repositories as well. Next slide. So um, to be able to also talk about certain people who normally use the Wikimedia Fabricator, when we have people who are really interested in contributing to the technical um, things with regards to Wikimedia projects as well, then we have developers who normally build tools, extensions, gadgets, and etc. Then we have people who also test tools Price and other software within the Wikimedia movement at large. Then people who normally deploy or uh, yeah, who normally deploy software or Wikimedia tools at large. Also, we do have people who normally are into communication. So it helps them to be able to also manage the taxes as well. Then uh, we have uh, people who normally design the user interface of most of our Wikimedia tools and uh, projects at large. And people who also work on translation works as well. The same for the documentation writers, analysts, and uh, even event organizers as well. Next slide. Right. Okay, so most of these taxes, right, or projects that are being done using um, the Wikimedia Fabricator, one is the extensions, right? Um, another one um, is mostly for uh, page views, uh, which is on also on, uh, one, two, and two, right, and flash. Then uh, we have also other teams as well, such as the site reliability engineering team or the technical operations team as well. People who also do work on gadgets with regards to Wikimedia Commons, people who also work on, uh, on screens, then some uh, Wikimedia chapters and user groups as well. Same for also organizing uh, Wikimedia events as well. And uh, also edit actions and Wikimedia communities at large. And you can be able to also use the Wikimedia Fabricator to 
also manage most of your projects within the Wikimedia ecosystem as well. Next time. Right. So mostly, most software maintainers normally use this uh, fabricate tattoo to be able to also manage their taxes. Sometimes, um, some teams also do prefer using other, uh, other project management tools with regards to uh, the fabricator of NASH. Right, then, um, okay, so next slide. So, um, through this particular presentation, we are just going to discover certain features in which can be able to also help us to be able to create our taxes, manage our taxes. And even how best can we be able to also collaborate using the Wikimedia Fabricator to attach? Then how best we can be able to also manage our project attach? So with the taxes, people can be able to create individual taxes using uh, the Fabricator, and uh, these taxes can be assigned or be created through project attach. So maybe, for instance, you saw maybe an issue pertaining to uh, one of the Wikimedia projects, or you discovered an issue later to. Um, any Wikimedia to even on two hub or two forge at large, and you feel that there is a specific feature that can be added, or there is a specific improvement that can be added to this particular two or software at large, you can be able to also create this taxes by searching for that particular project on Wikimedia Fabricator by creating this project and another person or someone who is interested in doing that particular tax can be assigned to you, can assign him or herself to that specific task to be able to work on that as well. Aside that, with regards to project and tax, um, most people who normally want to use the uh, Wikimedia uh, Fabricator, right, try to be able to create uh, projects on Wikimedia Fabricator in order for them to be able to manage their um, Fabricator taxes as well. So with regards to that, when they create these kind of projects, they are able to have some form of a whiteboard in which on this whiteboard comes with uh, columns filled with taxes based on uh, the taxes and priorities as well. Right? I'm also trying to be able to create a tax, right? So with this kind of taxes, you can be able to assign uh, the specific priority, how high or low of uh, the intensity or how uh, the status of that particular tax should be. And if, if you want to assign someone to that tax, then you can be able to also do that as well. Aside that, you can be able to subscribe to a specific tax if you want to be receiving notifications um, with regards to uh, that specific tax, then get to know much more how uh, that tax uh, moves forward, right? Or the improvements of that tax. Okay. Well, with regards to um, projects and things, tax things are uh, mostly uh, associated to projects, as I stated earlier. And um, projects also have do have members. So members who do subscribe to uh, these kind of projects, right? When you subscribe, subscribe to uh, a project, you normally see your uh, user profile being added to the members column with regards to any of the Wikimedia projects that you have, have been able to subscribe to or join. Okay. Next slide. Good. Okay. So um, this is how actually a whole um, Wikimedia project whiteboard does look like. So with this particular project uh, started with uh, the African Wikimedia Developers uh, Community, right, whereby people were able to um, ask specific taxes based on the, uh, the weight of the tax and uh, how these taxes um, are supposed to uh, be done, right? Then. Um, by having these kind of tax, it helps us to be able to also navigate through the whole whiteboard and know how best to be able to also work on these specific taxes as well. Right. So even to be able to also uh, use specific um, taxes from one column to the other, based on um, how uh, based on where that particular tax fits, uh, fits much better, then you can be able to also go to the neutral and sort it out as well. Or even okay, back, yeah. Or even clicking on that pencil icon, you can be able to also update or edit a specific tax, right? Or even improve upon the um, yeah. give much more meaning to the specific tax that you've been able to create as well. Next one. 
Okay. So with regards to certain priorities, too, based on the tax that you are creating, uh, based on the agency of that particular tax, you can be able to also add a priority value to the specific tax that you have been able to also create, right? And uh, as I already stated, priorities also express the agency of a specific tax based on the tax that you've been able to create. Then we also have uh, maintainers, developers, and project managers, also certain uh, priorities of taxes, uh, priorities for their taxes, so that it can be able to also help them to be able to know the uh, kind of taxes to attend to within a specific uh, duration or within a specific time frame. Right. Okay, so far, if there are any questions, you can let me know. The chat. The chat. Okay. The chat. The chat. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Um, the chat is for the previous. Yeah. Yes. So, since there aren't any questions, we are going to go through the process. Oh, there's a question. Okay. I have a question. Back to questions slides. No, it's the same thing. No, I'm saying it's my. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> go to the slides. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Jory. Uh. My question is about like understanding, making sure that I understand what the certificate is all about. Like, is it under the same license? Or the first question is it under the, under the same license as so other in their project. Does that mean that if I create a project, is on there, maybe it's a code, uh, a code repository, it's open source, in the license is already uh, CC yeah, by so, SA. Um, with regards to the project that you want to work on, right? So based on the project that you work, want to work on, before you are able to even create a project on the Wikimedia Fabricator, you have to create a tax, right? Then um, you assign um, the, there is a, a specific tag that you can be able to assign. So this specific tag is uh, for administrators, right? So once you are able to create this particular tax, then uh, one of the administrators of the multimedia fabricator is able to see that specific tax, uh, notice, uh, noting that uh, you are requesting to be able to create a project and um, you want access to um, the project work board in order to be able to assign specific taxes or create columns within these uh, kind of uh, projects that you want to create at large, then that means uh, once the administrator sees it, the person can be able to also help you create the project and assign you to the work board at large. With regards to um, licensing and everything, based on the, this, uh, the fabricator is just used for project management, so it's not involved with uh, uh, any licensing as well, but it is an open source. Uh, so anybody uh, can access the yeah. content, so it's open. Yeah, anybody can access mm -hmm. the content. You can put it private. Um, it depends. You can. You have settings that you can be able to also limit it to based on uh, the team. Yeah, the team that you are working on. But uh, since it's an open source tool, most people or anyone can be able to also have access to it. Then review uh, the kind of taxes that are currently available to it. Uh, Okay, uh, I don't know somebody else has got a second question. You, yeah. you mentioned a mass uh, mass creation yeah. Yeah, tool. Yeah. So it was, I had it like we had the issue of uh, not being able to create uh, many users' accounts during a session because of IP limits. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it like we have to go on the fabricator and ask for the request for somebody from the fabricator to allow our IP to be able to create multiple addresses? How is the fabricator helping those for okay. the IP limits? Yeah, with regards to IP block issues, right? I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah. Like limits, like we are not able to create uh, more than three uh, accounts uh -huh. with the same yeah. IP in the same during the same eighty thousand. Yeah. So with regards to um, creating a uh, mass uh, creation of accounts, right? You have to um, contact an administrator, right, or even a check user of that specific wiki to be able to give you that user right to be able to create a um, mass accounts for, uh, let's say, the team or the number of volunteers who signed up for that specific session, right? That's for on wiki, right? Then, aside also contacting um, 
them for them to be able to give you that user right once you send in uh, the uh, once they already have an account on another wiki right they can be able to also use that to also sign up for that specific wiki that you want to work on and aside that to um, you can be able to also send a list to either a check user and an administrator of that wiki for them to also create the accounts for all of them. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about the, the fabricator. How is the fabricator helping in that? Because yeah, so the fabricator is just a project management tool, right? And um, it's just used for working on specific taxes. Oh, that was yeah. a project that was yeah. done in the fabricator. Okay. Yeah. So okay. mostly um, projects. Yeah, okay. to be able to manage uh, taxes within projects as well, right? And for people to be able to come together and then collaborate on a specific project, right? So, for instance, let's go back to the web board. Yeah, before the slides, I think you should use the... Right. So, this is an example, right? On a fabri of a fabricator web board. Right. And this particular web board comes with um, taxes that have been filled with these specific columns. Right. So, based on the columns, we are able to notice that, okay, um, this um, kind of taxes are listed at the backlog. Uh, contributions, new contributions that are coming in, right, which people are supposed to be able to also uh, work on. Taxes that people are currently working on, right. Taxes that um, are currently still in post, uh, progress, taxes that have already been completed, right? So, for instance, um, someone might visit, um, let's say, a media wiki page, right? And uh, you, there is a little problem, or there might be some typos, but people do not have access to that specific um, page to be able to also edit that particular page to correct these kind of errors, right? So, they come onto the fabricator to look for the projects of that particular, um, let's say, tool or software, right, on the fabricator. So once they are able to discover that and they go to the web board of that particular um, project on fabricator, then that means they can be able to create a tax, right, mm -hmm. on fabricator to be able to lodge that complaint mm -hmm. for it to be fixed by someone who is interested in fixing that issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any more questions? Any, Any more questions? questions? Okay. Yeah. So with the process of um, creating an account on the Wikimedia Fabricator, if you already have a media wiki account or even a wiki tech account, you can use the same login details to be able to log in through the uh, process of um, creating an account on uh, media wiki, right? Which has an, uh, an authentication process. Yeah. Right. So within the registration aspect too, if you don't have any accounts or any of the media uh, wikis too as well, you can just um, create your fabricator name, then add your email to it, a name that you want to be known as on the fabricator as well. Then you click on register to be able to also go through uh, the process by also um, Verifying your email and uh, your user details by your email and password. That's the next step. Good. So once you're able to create the fabricator account and um, you visit your profile at the profile section, should be at this side. Once you click on this particular drop down, you should be able to um, see. Um, you should be able to see your user profile by clicking on the user profile on Fabricator, right? Okay, next slide. And you, with this particular page, too, you can be able to also create your user profile for the media Fabricator. Now, to be able to also create a tag, uh, sorry, a specific tag on the um, Wikimedia Fabricator too, um, you can just click on this particular button once we click on it, we are able to have this specific drop down that gives us as the access to be able to create a specific tax with regards to the Wikimedia fabricator. Or yeah, creating a tax and adding a, a project tag 
to the perspectives that he created. Next slide. Yeah. So when creating the tax, we have a title, someone to be able to assign the tax to, a description, wherever I do this description, normally states um, a short description about the tax cap, then you give possible steps in which um, if someone is supposed to go through the same procedure to be able to encounter that particular situation, you give the steps for that, and then you also add an expected result. How it should rather um, uh, be output, uh, how it should be uh, rather be displayed, right? But it's not being displayed in that particular manner. So once you are able to add all of this to it, and uh, maybe you know the project tag for that particular um, issue that you want to fix, you just add that particular um, project tag to the tags that you are currently creating. And, and if there is maybe a specific project for that, or even um, a mailing list, right? For the tags that you are currently working on, to, you can just add that um, mailing list or even a project tag or any uh, other users to as well to be able to subscribe to that uh, tag that you are currently uh, currently creating. Good. So when creating the tax, when you scroll down at the description. Um, review, it helps you to be able to also preview uh, the tags that you are currently creating. For you to be able to know that the context in which or the, uh, yeah, the context in which you are writing or uh, trying to be able to publish for that specific tags, it's able to, uh, how it will be displayed once you are able to publish that specific tags. So that's the, the purpose of the preview. Uh, section with regards to creating a specific tax. Good. And um, there's just a link to be able to also guide you on how to be able to create a bag with a new one. Good. So, um, with regards to also creating projects, right, on the media um, fabricator, you need a specific um, access or authority to be able to create a project, right? You need to be a trusted contributor then you also have to be uh, you have to be an administrator to be able to create these kind of taxes on uh, uh, sorry these kind of projects on wikimedia fabricator right mm -hmm. but if you don't have the kind of permission to be able to create these uh, projects on wikimedia fabricator automatically mm -hmm. you create a tax to request mm -hmm. for the uh, creation of the specific projects that mm -hmm. you want to create then you state the purpose of that project, yes. why you want to create that particular project. And you request for access to be able to create um, the work board in which, or design a work board in, in, a, in a way that you want to design that specific work board. To be able to also help you to uh, manage the taxes with the team that you are currently working with. Right. Okay, let's move on. But however, if you already do have assets in terms of creating um, projects on uh, the Wikimedia Fabricator tool as well, you first uh, start by visiting the project or there is a button as, uh, closer to the create project. Once you are able to get the create project button, um, you should be able to have a specific interface, which helps you to be able to provide a name for the project that you are creating, the description, then you can be able to choose an icon. The icon should be based on the kind of project that you are working on. Aside that, you if there are specific hashtags that you want to also add to it, add to it. then maybe if there might be some one or two members within that uh, team that you are currently, you want to work on that specific project with, you can be able to also add your username to some applicator. And if you want that um, project to be visible, or let's say be public to any other person too, you can be able to also make it public to other people as well. So in regards to even people who have not even logged in to the media fabricators like that. <coughs> then, based on uh, the kind of taxes or people that want to be able to have access to um, editing or even other specific taxes to the projects that you are currently working on or you've been able to create, you specify that, right? Based on other editable, then the people who can be able to also have access to join 
that particular project. So once you are done filling all that details, with regards to the first interface, you select the kind of um, web board that you want to create. If you want to be able to import another web, uh, web board from a different project that have already been created, you can be able to also go through that process by importing certain columns from different projects that you want to be able to involve within the project that you've been able to create. But if you want to create new web boards, uh, you want to create a new web board, by adding specific columns to uh, the new web board that you are currently creating, you select the empty uh, uh, web board that you want to be able to create. Then click on the uh, create web board. Next slide. So once you are able to create the new web board, you definitely have this tab holder, which is uh, the backlog. Whereby you can be able to also click on the settings icon, then add multiple columns based on the um, specific um, uh, tab holders that you want to have within your specific web board that you want to get. Then uh, you can be able to also reorder the web board or rearrange uh, the, color, uh, the card holders within the specific web board that you've been able to create. Then uh, you can be able to also show. Um, Hidden columns are also high specific columns with regards to the card holders that you can be able to create uh, on your web board at large. The same thing for changing the background color, maybe from white to let's say um, black or any other color that you want to use as well. Next slide. Good. So once you are able to create uh, this specific web board, you should be able to have a specific interface like this with no specific taxes being filled up within uh, these specific columns at large. But in order to be able to add a uh, specific tax to uh, the columns that you've been able to create, you click on the pencil icon to be able to create a new uh, tax, right? So by creating a new tax, you go through the same interface or the same procedure that I stated earlier. Right, with regards to creating a new tax at large. Next slide. So also with regards to sorting out uh, taxes, so you can be able to also sort out taxes based on the uh, pricing level of um, uh, open taxes or taxes that are currently on the web board. Aside that, you can be able to also do um, or sort out uh, Taxes based on specific people who have been, a who have been able to create uh, taxes within on the specific web board that you uh, are currently viewing, then based on the people who have been able to also, uh, based on the status and also by uh, title two as well. Next slide. Okay. So, also with regards to also filtering. Um, taxes, you can be able to also filter out taxes that are currently open, right? If you are visiting a specific web board of a project that you want to find a specific tax to be able to also work on, you can be able to filter out the open taxes that are currently available on a specific web board for you to be able to go through these taxes and know the taxes that you can be able to also work on by assigning yourself to the specific tax that you want to work on. So also following up with activities, right, with, with regards to uh, taxes or projects that um, uh, should be of interest to you, you can, be, uh, you can decide to receive notifications via email, right, by setting up, uh, by going through your settings and adding your email uh, uh, preference, right. Then you can be able to also subscribe and subscribe to a specific tax within um, a specific multimedia project that you want to contribute to. Same for watching. So with watching a specific project too, it's more like you are still subscribing to a specific project. So any updates that um, happens on the specific project, you can be able to also have a look or uh, get a notification by email with regards to that specific project. Next so um, this particular uh, image shows us how to be able to also subscribe to um, a specific tax and also to unsubscribe to a specific tax with regards to taxes that 
can be found on a specific Wikimedia Fabricator uh, Whiteboard or any other taxes column at the right um, side of the uh, Wikimedia Fabricator when you do not be on the Wikimedia Fabricator. Next slide. So with regards to projects too as well, once you visit any project, at the uh, right hand side too, you can be able to support the watch project by clicking on the watch project. Any notifications with regards to that specific project, you should be able to also receive uh, notifications with regards to that specific project as well. Okay. Uh, next. Wow. So, with regards to um, also more advanced um, features, as to um, the Wikimedia Fabricator as well. When creating specific taxes for security issue wise, we recommend that um, there shouldn't be uh, taxes, uh, spaces within uh, titles, right? When creating project or non public project, right? Then you should be able, you can be able to also um, uh, personalize your dashboard or even your user profile as well. Then for advanced sections, so with advanced sections with regards to searching for um, specific repositories using the media wiki code uh, uh, search interface or tool, which can be able to also help you to search for specific repositories to contribute to um, these kind of uh, repositories too as well. Based on the repository that you are much more familiar with, based on your skill set, you can be able to also use the media wiki uh, code search tool to be able to search for the kind of uh, repository you want to be able to also contribute to as well. The same for also, okay. So based on you also being able to book back taxes, then also um, uh, watch similar uh, taxes to uh, add similar taxes to your uh, watch list as well with regards to sorry projects. Then um, uh, for you to be able to also do taxes, right? And breaking down taxes based on the hierarchy level of um, the project that you are currently working on based on the uh, how best you are able to create your work board, they should be able to also help you to come out with uh, taxes that you can be able to create, right? And within the description aspect of your taxes, you can be able to break uh, down your taxes into sub-taxes. That's uh, when people visit these kind of taxes, they will know how best to be able to also contribute to the specific tax that you want to also work on. And with regards to um, agile developments, it also helps uh, teams to be able to also know how best to be able to also complete their projects that they want to work on from the planning to the development aspects to even the testing and the through deployment uh, through the deployment stage as well. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So um, in regards to uh, more resources, we can be able to also visit, uh, or anyone who picks up this slide can be able to also visit any of the repositories to be uh, sorry, any of the, these directories or links to be able to also learn much more on how to be able to also use uh, the Wikimedia Fabricator for um, project management, any of the projects that they want to work on, it, it being maybe a developer project or it being maybe a, a user testing project or any project that you want to work on within the Wikimedia space as well. Also, if you discover any issues with regards to them. Um, any of the Wikimedia projects and you feel that you want to be able to lodge a complaint or where you should be able to report such issues to, you can visit uh, how to report a bug issue, then add um, the kind of the uh, stage, the particular, uh, or describe the specific issue by adding screenshots and everything to it so that people who do contribute to uh, the text space too can be able to have a view of the issue uh, that are currently pending for them to be able to also know how best to contribute to that specific tool as well, or uh, resolve that specific uh, uh, issue at large. Okay, next steps. Okay. So um, credit goes to um, the Wikimedia Fabricator administrators as well, with regards to Wikimedia Dutchland, and um, also with uh, regards to the documentation pages on the Media Wiki as well, then also most of the resources which are currently on the fabricator at large. 
which have been much more helpful in terms of creating this particular session as well. Thank you all very much. If there are any questions at the moment. The tools are available on yeah. phone four. Yes, you can. There's a web interface project management too. So once you have a media wiki account or even a wiki tech account, you can just be able to log in through your web browser based on any device that you are currently using. So no mobile app? Currently, mobile app? No. It's a web interface too. So you log in via your web browser. Yes, um, I have like two questions. Yes. Oh, the first is. Uh, let's say I'm creating um, an app. Oh, I'm creating a new app. Let's say Wikidata. Let me. Oh, let me just. Yeah, is I'm creating a new app that. Oh, uh, let's say I'm creating a Wikidata app, mobile app. Is it the place? Is it Fabricator the place for it? Like, if the project is not going to be hosted on the uh, MF, uh, yeah, on, on MF two for for yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it depends on the agreements, right? It mostly depends on the agreements that you normally do have with the team and um, how conversants that team are much more familiar with uh, a specific project management. Suit. So based on the two that most of your team members are familiar with or are much more conversant in terms of using that specific uh, project management tool, then they can be able to also use that. But if they are much more comfortable using the Wikimedia Fabricator or um, open to learning how best they can be able to use Wikimedia Fabricator to manage their projects too as well, they can be able to also learn and use the Wikimedia Fabricator to manage the, their whole um, project as well. So starting from how they should be able to plan their project, how they can be able to also develop uh, their project, how um, people too can be, or other users can be able to also test their project, right, then through the uh, deployment stage and how they can be able to also move these uh, tools or softwares, right, to either to forge or to have as well, right, for people or users within the Wikimedia space to be able to also have access to. So my question was more about the type of project where Wikimedians, like, uh, is a project management tool, um, I was like, because you, you mentioned people can come and just see a task and assign them themselves, yeah. themselves to, to the task. My, so my question was to know, like, because you talk about the restriction, only admins can create new projects or they can authorize you, authorize your project. So there's that limitation. Um, so it's like, if the project is not going to be uh, published on Toolforge, mm -hmm. can you use the resources like somebody from the uh, from the tech team, from yeah. the developer community, yeah. come and just assign a task, assign it some, you create a task and somebody can just assign a task to a project that at the end of the day might just be on Google Play or not not being uh, on Tool, like on Toolforge. So, so that was the, like, it was a question about people being involved in projects that, that are not primarily made for, to be uh, published on the, the wiki on the wiki platform and the, the, the other question let me just finish with it is about the um, tracking of contribution is it the same way uh, other wikimedia project tracks like you have contributed to this number of tasks is it like the number of edits the number of lines of codes or number of tasks or sub tasks mm -hmm. that you're before okay. you have achieved on the project. So okay, um, can I use um, this laptop for a yes. Okay, but before that, let me visit um, this particular slide. Okay, good. So with this particular slide, right, Based on the edited by, right, once you are creating a specific tax, it should be able to tell us how um, uh, the kind of access that we can be able to give to people, right? So, with this particular tax, uh, sorry, project that the person was creating, right, they can be able to specify that maybe anyone who has a fabricator account can be able to also have access to the work board of this particular project. You can be able, when creating, if you are not um, 
an administrator, or you don't have permission to be able to create a project, right? You want creating that sucks to request for creating a project, right? You can't be able to also add that specific detail to that description to specify that you don't want this particular um, uh, project to be much more uh, open or public, right? And to people who are not even having, uh, who have not been able to even log in onto the, the media fabricator as well, right? And um, aside that, so let me, let me, sorry. I guess I'm yeah, still. Yeah, just, um, just enter your Okay, uh, so when we visit um, the fabricator.wikimedia.org, right, we can be able to um, see other side that there are new taxes that are being spotted from different kind of projects, right? Then aside that to taxes that have already been closed. So some taxes can be taxes that have already been worked on, taxes that were declined in terms of um, no one was able to work on that specific tax, so they decided to decline that specific tax, right? Or uh, th that specific tax wasn't much needed, right? Mm -hmm. And that, uh, the uh, timing which it was created and uh, projects that, made, that are made uh, much more public to um, other users or uh, users of uh, Wikimedia Fabricator to be able to also contribute to, right? Aside that, too, if you are a newcomer too, but you do have, um, let's say, a specific skill set, right, that you want to contribute to any of the projects that you think that you can be able to contribute to. Once you visit the newcomer taxes, you should be able to also view uh, such kind taxes to be able to also contribute to these taxes as well. So what, it depends on uh, the authority level or the access level that you want to give permission to for people to have access to uh, the kind of project that you are creating as well. Then um, when we, okay, so let me log in. Yeah. Mohamed has a question there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a question, but I just want to add. Yeah, uh, a contribution. Um, for many of us, fabricators mm -hmm. might look like yeah. a software development, yeah. management. Yeah. <laughs> but that is sure. absolutely mm -hmm. not entirely the case. You know, as organizers, mm -hmm. so, um, media, and what could be a task that you could assign to a non to a Wikimedian? Example of tax that's non tech. Yeah. So that you for example, do. let's say I was organizing uh, uh, of Adonai Women in South Africa, or I was organizing an outreach to the universities as we did in uh, Cameroon. This would be a place where you have you could assign tasks to your team members. You know, this team member is the, the, in charge of catering, and this team member is in charge of the events and the travel. You can break down all of these tasks into smaller chunks and okay. assign them to a team members. But you have a great big way of managing the entire activity. Okay. So I really encourage people who are not even in tech to actually start some community. Because once you do that, it kind of documents the process online for the entire media community mm -hmm. to learn from, from the scene. And I've actually used public papers to organize non-development tasks. So yeah, just something to add. Okay, wow. Well, I didn't thank you very much. <laughs> it gives a new here. perspective to it. So, after that, I'll show you one project. <laughs> it's like a whole uh, technical training session, but uh, based on the ta uh, taxes, you'll be able to notice that um, there were people contributing to only logistics, people contributing to photography, people contributing to blogging, right? That all of these people come together. To work on that particular training session. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is uh, mm -hmm. 
Does it mean that the fabricator work like the dashboard or the matrix for us? So that when you have an event, you can divide the events among yourself. Once you are working, you see how you are working, the progress that you have made so far, where you have reached, and then what you have achieved so far. Yeah. So you can be able to ask a uh, stated that there is also a dashboard. But let me move on on to let me log in then show you. Yes, you can be able to track in the middle of contributions. Instead of creating a dashboard and then creating matrix But the actual dashboard is different, like yeah, it gets the metrics, like how many edits, but here is really yeah, let me show you. you. If we can find it here, then I think it's here we will do instead of doing it separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put absolutely. everything together when mm -hmm. you are doing an event. So that when you just go, you can see everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I think we are doing two different, different things. things. Yes. <laughs> the dashboards mm -hmm. and metrics are for the this one is that that is management project team management yeah. planning yeah. <laughs> it's like the manager project yeah. like the management of yeah, let me so this one log in then no that mm -hmm. one is in a, it's another tool like in, it's another tool that contributed to the uh, yeah. Like actually it help you to okay. manage your project. So um I'm logging in. Good. Good. So I go through the authentication process, then <laughs> good. So I've been able to log in at the moment. Um I want to search for a minute. Right. So um let me move this down. So with this particular uh, web board, right, we can be able to notice that there were there was one column for training sessions, another column for people who wanted to work on the hacking projects as a whole, right? Then people who created feature requests. So they identified a specific tool, uh, some specific tools on um, two hard that they feel that uh, certain features can be added, right, onto uh, these kind of tools. So once they are able to add these feature requests, there are people who will definitely be love mm -hmm. to be able to create these features and um, improve on, on this particular uh, those two. So based on that, they can be able to also do that. Then we have the column for volunteering, right? So the column for volunteering also came whereby um, people who wanted to also uh, create documentations in terms of um, writing um, given general information with regards to the whole hackathon, right? Then people who wanted to create uh, blogging and who wanted to create blogs, right? To be able to also share their experience um, about how the whole training events and the hackathon project went on. Then people who also wanted to also focus on photography at large. Assign that to someone who was as assigned to a specific tax for only logistics. So all of these kind of, um, let's say, taxes comes under the um, volunteering section or the volunteering column. I guess that's much more clearer. Yeah. Then when we visit the main page, we can be able to spot that from the recent activities, right? Based on the contributions that people have been able to make, same for commenting and et cetera, um, Right, if someone made um, a specific contribution, but you want to comment on that specific contribution, you can be able to also um, add a comment, right? Or maybe um, you review that specific um, yeah. tax, but you feel that there should be more improvement on that particular tax. So you can be able to also add a comment to that specific tax in terms of also contributing to, um, or also sharing ideas for how people can be, can be able to also improve upon the, the tasks that they did work on, right? Then, um, okay, so um, let me show you guys, um, right, this tax. This is a closed tax, but let me load it and show it to you, right? So this person created this tax, then later, um, it was stated that there weren't a, a little bit of, um, 
the information on gas facilitators wasn't enough, right? So they were, uh, we were told to be able to also improve upon that specific documentation from time to time. So I also helped that person, person to be able to work on that specific task. Then maybe if you want to add a comment to a specific task that has already been created, you come to this side, then you type in the comments that you want to add to the task that you want to add, uh, you, uh, you want to comment on. So once you comment on that uh, task, this is the preview section that shows in the comments that you may add that you want to add okay. to the tags that you want to um, comment on, right? Mm -hmm. Then you add an action. So the add action is uh, for you to be able to also change the uh, status, right? The status of the tags, right? Uh, to maybe um, the tags has already been worked on. Maybe um, no one worked on that specific tag, so you want to decline that specific tag, right? Or you want to move it on, uh, on the web board, right? or even through different workboards, uh, sorry, on uh, different columns on the whiteboard, right? Then you want to maybe also change uh, subscribers, people who have already been subscribed to that particular tax, you want to change that too as well, you can be able to also do that as well, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, it's nice it's a small example, so yeah. if, if you type in this task, uh -huh. I'll tell you the task, this is okay. three, three, one, yeah. <laughs> like one quick question if we get one it's in english um we have people who normally do localize um, uh, most of the contents that are on fabricator right but uh, since i'm mostly focused on english uh, that's why i'm using english so I'm, I'm, that, because i was um, in i didn't see where to change the language of the um, so with that, uh, uh, okay, seven four six one. Sorry, six one. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So. so can I? Yeah. Yes. So this is a non-technical task that I'm just going to do. What you should. So there was an instance where we want um, the Titanium comedians, the community wanted to um, clean up their mailing list because they had duplicates. Um, so they had the mailing list, about two of them, on the regular media mailing list platform. And they had a Google group, they had a, a, a Yahoo group then as well. We needed to centralize and just clean up the old ones and merge. Okay. So if you scroll up a little, so they will see the title of the, uh, sorry, scroll to a very top. Yeah. So I created this task, and the title of the task was okay, guys, let's clean up the dynamic millions mailing list. And then I described the problem, and I broke down the various the various um, things that people needed to do, so that we can call this process the the, the process has completed successfully. Once I was able to break it down, I could assign different, different people. So you can see the check marks there. Yeah. Someone has to actually go and close the Google groups. Someone has to open a new mailing list where change the name and things like that. And then people took the various ticks. And when they were done, they would just take it. And after the whole process, I just closed the ticket. So they are all called tickets. Mm -hmm. Once you close it, it means this task is ended. So a simple process like this is this an example of a non-technical thing that you could do with the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, thank you. I really enjoyed this session because uh, it's an uh, eye opener for some people. And uh, like me, uh, I've not been using Fabricator. Uh, I'm not to, um, I've not been using it uh, for some time. So I will want to request if there's going to be a uh, kind of uh, uh, maybe video or something that we can easily learn, you know.
personally, and uh, we can also connect with you after this so that uh, in case we encounter a challenge, we can be able to, able to solve it out with us. So I don't know if that is possible. Yeah, so that is possible. Um, I also shared some few links earlier, but um, if you want more resources on Fabricator to once you visit the Fabricator page, all of these resources, right, all of these links can be able to also help you learn how best to be able to also contribute to um, Fabricator as well. So in terms of creating a generic tax, right, then um, aside that, you can also visit um, Wikimedia Commons. Once you visit Wikimedia Commons, I think there are some few um, presentation slides on Wikimedia Commons that can be able to also help you to um, go through these slides and learn how best to be able to also um, try the um, slides on uh, uh, Wikimedia Commons too as well, right? <laughs> Those who are not. <laughs> no, so, in order to be able to create a project, right, based on your experience level, to be able to have that authorization, to be able to, uh, to be able to have that, that authorization to create projects without even contacting administrators, you have to have a let's say some form of experience in terms of contributing to fabricator you have to be like a trusted contributor right on fabricator so once you're a trusted contributor one of the administrators can also make you an admin uh, uh, an administrator on fabricator so once you are an admin on fabricator you can be able to move forward to be able to also create um, projects on multimedia fabricator right right but uh, mostly uh, the fastest way is um, by being maybe a member of maybe a, uh, some one or two teams, right? That's a more, let's say, uh, important within the Wikimedia movement. That makes it much more simple. But if you do contribute a lot using uh, Wikimedia Fabricator in terms of using it to manage your project and next, et cetera, some one or two projects based on how you are able to manage these kind of projects, one, um, there might be one or two administrators who would like to move you or give you the access to become um, a trusted contributor. So once becoming a trusted contributor, then from there, as your time goes on from, uh, from time to time, they can, they can be able to give you that access to be able to create projects on the uh, Wikimedia Fabricator at large. Um, okay. yes. I, I think the session is room chair. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. I just oh, allowed you okay, to. Okay. So thank you. Oh, my, just the I have a like. I don't know. It's a very like practical uh, yeah. question. Like, what if like I want to like when you add a task? Do you can you specify what the profile like the, the skill that you want to for the person to be able to 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 do that task? Yes, yeah, so just so, assign the project. Like let let let's say uh, I'm not a developer, or maybe yeah. I don't master any technology. I want to see what are the tasks that I maybe for documentation that I can yeah. work on. Yeah, is there like I can go and filter the tasks and say, okay, I want something that's about writing. Yeah, and I can find it. And how do we go about if there is a filter? How do we filter to see the tasks that are actually the type of tasks that we can. Okay. Um, we can work on maybe it's, it's a technology that we master as a developer, or it's just yeah. so, um, a skill that we I have. wanted to. Okay, wanted to have access to. You. So most of these open taxes, right, can be found on Media Wiki, right. Once you log in onto Media Wiki, and uh, you go onto the main interface of uh, Media Wiki, in terms of the contribution aspect of Media Wiki, you can be able to also observe them. Um, uh, certain taxes and thus uh, certain skill sets that uh, you can be able to also have access to uh, taxes which are mostly for newcomers. So these taxes which are mostly for newcomers, you can be able to also go through these taxes based on the skill sets that you normally do have. Then after going through these kind of um, taxes, you can be able to also know how best to be able to also contribute to some of these taxes. Welcome also on the um, Media Wiki, there are uh, some projects being managed by uh, some mentors, right? 
So if you find a specific project that you want to contribute to, but you need some guidance, you can be able to also reach out to most of these uh, mentors. And most of these mentors normally do have uh, user pages or media with you. So you can just uh, uh, message them on their top pages for them to also give you a response to that. Right. Aside that, too, on the Fabricator too, there are open taxes which are good for uh, newcomers. So you can just review through these taxes based on the tax, the tax that are associated to uh, the taxes that you can be able to find at the good, uh, uh, newcomers uh, column, right? On the ta uh, the taxes column. So once you're able to go through the tax, so uh, before you find any tax, um, before you can be able to see any tax, you will be able to notice that there are specific tax that are associated with the, uh, these kind of taxes, right? Right. So all of these taxes can be able to help you to know how best, um, if these kind of taxes are much more good for you, or if you can be able to also contribute to these kind of taxes, right? So with the regards to like this uh, first tax, like this talks about abstract wiki. So if you are good with uh, in terms of uh, programming, right, and uh, you are much more familiar in terms of creating functions as well, right? Then that means that you can be able to also take a view or take a look at this particular tax. Then if you can be able to also work on this tax, you just go, uh, you just click on the tax, then you assign the tax to yourself, right? So at the assign column, you can click on edit a tax, edit tax, then assign, so you type in your uh, fabricator username to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions? So, Sorry, can I add yeah. something similar? So, um, let's say you are itching to help with documentation. <laughs> uh, let's say you documentation around the uh, wiki data. So, if you go to the search <laughs> at the top here, and before you start typing, there's a a small anchor on the left, yeah. just mm -hmm. next to the search. Yeah. Okay. And you click on advanced search. Yeah. And Good. Post. Advanced search. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you click here, you will see that. So let's say you want to do documentation around the um, whatever. So the tag there at the very bottom, mm -hmm. you can search for documentation issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a type and a sound. Okay. Yeah, it's around which okay. then yeah. Okay. Just do the query there. Okay. 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 Okay.